This is ice to my number cool video. Introduction, clarification, and expansion. When I did my number cool video, I cannot deal it with just the purpose of sharing the fun stuff. So I cannot do an add proper introductions and the context of it. So I'm going to explain that in this video. After doing some proper research, I think number cool can be better translated as text shorthand or acronym. It's kind of like the shorthand used in text message. For example, forever, instead of writing forever, you write for ever. So just look at the for part, don't look at the ever part. Another example will be tomorrow, to, morrow. But the best example is probably one, two, one, which, you know, as it sounds, one, two, one. Okay, now, where do you see them? You see them on the internet, text message, or chatting. For example, I use eight, eight a lot. When you say it in Mandarin, it says ba ba, which sounds like bye bye. It might be a little bit hard to make the connection, but that's what it means in number code. Another place you see them is charms, key charms. Those are really popular in Asian gift shop. I don't mean the ones that focus on culture, but rather the ones that focus on kawaii stuff. For example, the key charm that I have in here. See this little piggy right here? It says I love you at the top, and then it says isan isan on the bottom. So it's kind of like saying, I love you forever. Number code is definitely not for professional users. It's kind of like writing English paper with text message. Your English professor is going to get really mad. It's a twist on tones. Mandarin is a tonal language. So the tone you put on the syllabus can have a really big difference in what you're trying to say. But this number code kind of takes a twist on it where it doesn't really 100% match the tone but you can kind of understand what it's trying to say. So it's kind of like the it's kind of like the fun way to learn something. Purpose of the number code video. The purpose of that video is to make a connection. When I learn a language, I feel like it's going to make a much better impression on me if I have some kind of connection to it. The connection doesn't have to be like related to language. It could be something really random. But that randomness helps me memorize it and it also makes learning language a lot more fun. When it comes to learning language, I prefer the fun way rather than being really straight on it. Let's take this for example. In an Asian class that I took, the professor will get really mad if you address someone as Chinese Chinese. So instead of saying Chinese, you have Chinese Chinese. Now that might not make sense a lot in English, but there is kind of like a meaning to it. When I lived in New York, you can see there are the Chinese where they have been there for a while and they kind of accustomed to the area, to the environment. And then there's the Chinese Chinese where they just recently immigrated to the place and you could just kind of tell the way how they act. You kind of take the fun away from it if you've been like really strict on everything. Of course, unless you are doing something really professional, then you definitely want to, you know, stay professional for that stuff. Now, pronunciation. When I pronounce the numbers, I do them one number at a time. That means when I say 一三一四, I'm really saying 1314. I'm not saying uh, 1314. When you read it as a whole number, then in Mandarin it is 一天三百一十四, which no matter how you want to twist the, twist the tone of it, it just does not match up to 一三一四. When I was trying to figure out how to pronounce 1314, which I wasn't sure at first because 一天三百, this part makes sense. And then 一四四 didn't make sense to me because 一四四 literally means 1104. So I was thinking 1104, doesn't that kind of mean 104? I don't know how I got 104, but that's what I thought. But later on I realized 一四 means 110, there's 110. Like if you say 20, then it has 210 in it, that kind of stuff. When I was looking at the pronunciation, another thing I found was that if you reverse 一三一四, then it becomes 四一三一. There's this post that says when you say 四一三一, it kind of means like 四一三一, die one, shatter one. I don't know if that even makes sense. It's kind of like, you know, someone dies and then it also breaks into pieces. That That's how I interpret from that from that translation. I just thought it's kind of funny when you reverse something because it's totally different. It's kind of like in the English term, it's live, L-I-V-E, and then if you go backwards, it becomes E-V-I-L, evil. I feel like this video is kind of necessary because it provides a lot more context. So yeah, that's my eyes.